Today I'm, I'm going to show you how I uh, put in a large mass and then uh, work it down. So it's taking the no tan of it and adding more values and adding more detail each time you come back and pass over that one specific area. So we're going to work on this beautiful uh, pet portrait that I'm doing and we're going to paint the hyacinth. Okay, so as you can see, I've just put in the idea of these various flowers that are going to be part of the portrait. And um, I just thought I'd show you how I go about uh, laying in and working with the masses. So rather than thinking that, oh, here we have a hyacinth, right? What we are looking at is the design, the lights and the darks. Okay, so looking at the reference photo, I'm uh, just going, I'm squinting down and looking at the darks. So I'm going to mix up with my ultramarine blue and quinacridone a dark. If you add a little bit of the lemon yellow, I'm keeping everything cool. It will, it will just dull it down a little bit because of the complementary color that you're adding. I'm going to use some liquid on this. I want to get more like a glaze. So I'm looking down. I've kind of already put it in, right? Um, and from the reference photo, you can see it's, um, I'm not going to bring it up this high because the frame will come around and we'll have a kissing edge. We don't want the edges to, uh, to be like that. So I'm going to move it down to come behind her ear. That's really all I need to do, squinting down. This is, we have a shape coming this way. I don't need to know that I'm painting the hyacinth. All I need to know is that I'm squinting down and seeing the pattern of the lights and darks. And I like that. Now I'm going to take the shadow color and brighten it up. I'm using titanium white here. Squinting down again. And I'm just going to get the basic shapes. I'm not separating the values in this stage, just the light side and the dark side. I'm not too worried about color temperature either. And that is the beginning. So we're, we're, we have the, the main shape mass, 
which I kind of put in. And then you add your dark and your light. So this alone is considered uh, uh, a no tan. It's not a specific dark and light, but it is a dark and light of a certain hue of a certain color that we're going to be using on here. So, uh, so you can think of it as a no tan. At least that's, that's what I do. Um, I'm mixing this color with this color and getting a more of a mid-tone play going on. So I'm going to try and get a little bit more of the um, of the reflecting light off of the flower petals on this hyacinth. There are some dark areas. Okay, so that is what we're starting with. And normally what I do is um, I'll go through and do all of the, the flower placement this way first and then go back and uh, do the more refined work. And you can see when you add a little bit of the light value on the other side, on the dark side, from the light reflecting around, it, immediately it creates that round form that we are looking for. Uh, so I am going to stop that right here. And um, when I get to the next stage, uh, we'll go back again. So now I'm going to use this brush. Uh, it's a cat tongue. You can see it gets pointy at the top uh, to begin to define the flowers, the light, um, the lighter areas. And they're just little flicks squinting down. There's some there. there and the trick is not to do too much and again I'm really just looking at the lightest the lightest value This here is going to be taken out, this spot right here, because it's confusing to the, um, to the hyacinth flower. I put it in as a daisy, uh, an upcoming daisy style flower, uh, but it's not going to work, so I'm going to
just kind of um, use a bluish. Doesn't have to be exactly the same as what I uh, used on the background here because, uh, in fact, the the background blue is um, too blue. So I want to definitely work with it. And now that I have a color mixed, I'm painting in to a hyacinth to break up the the roundness okay i still think i'm going to just remove these flowers for now to to assess because I'm unsure about how I want that to go. So coming back in All along here are flicks of potential flowers. We don't need to paint them all in specifically, right? That's almost enough. Now on the shadow side, there are some areas where it is light, but if I put in the same light colors, as I did here. It will have such a high contrast that it will pull away from the focus of the, um, the collie. So what you do is you go a half a value lower or one value lower depending on the background, uh, the, the other values around it. So what I'm doing is creating uh, a darker color and um, slightly grayed down because I don't want the attention here, but I do need, I do need some things happening in here, right? Can you see that? That's going to work for this stage. And again, you don't need a lot. That is plenty. There's some areas here that are too Prominent. And once you have this stage in, that's when you can begin to go back again and define a little bit more. Again, we're not going to get hyper detailed. The important part is to establish the feel of these flowers.
and you can go back in and brush in little spots of the dark darks, which will also help. Yeah, okay. That's it, you guys. Quick quick tip of the day. If you paint from large abstract shapes and hone it in, yeah, you're gonna get it. It's gonna work. So be inspired, be creative, be you, keep on painting. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Ciao. What is with that chow thing? <laughs> In Greek, we say yeshu. Adiyah.